Hey guys, Pointer5012, and today I am making a Glitter Helm Caverns tutorial because school just ended and I have like a whole day of free time, so I just thought I would do this. So, this map can be kind of hard for some people because it's like the first really big map that you have. It's so big that you're given like 180 seconds to make your build, so it can be kind of challenging. But if you have a straightforward approach of how to deal with each choke point, then you should be pretty fine. Like, this could be hard with one tower character, but if you use two or more, then it is significantly easier. Like, this is a map where you have to start actually combining different types of towers, experimenting with them, and because you can't really rely anymore once you get to this point in the game with just one type of tower. And if you do, then the ogres, like insane difficulty ogres, can be pretty troublesome, especially if you don't simply have strength drain auras from the monks. So each trap, the way we're going to integrate both of the tower heroes, like the main tower heroes, which is, such as tower squire and tower monk, we're going to be placing slice and dice, harp, harpoon turret, the slice and dice and harpoon turret kind of strengthen each other. The slice and dice kills anything that tries to come any close to it, and the harpoon shoots anything that's out of the slice and dice's range. And then we're gonna put in a typical aura stack, which is um electric ensnare and strength drain aura. This will definitely kill everything if you if you have strong enough towers, which I would recommend about 150 tower power tower power tower strength and probably a hundred tower health. That should definitely get you through all this. You could add more stuff if you want. You could change stuff around. You could change the block, the slice and dice blockade, which is eight DU to magic blockade, which is one DU each. And you could start putting in some traps. There's so many things that you can do with this map. You have 165 DU, so you might as well experiment. What I'm doing here is a typical squire monk setup. And then I'm going to use a couple traps. The setup I have right now, um, I'm building it in a certain way be where it'll survive the first wave. And then you finally build all the squire towers by the end of this wave, this combat phase, or by the beginning of wave 6. So you can see there that, the, that this slice and dice blockade will be able to stand up to wave 5. But at wave 7, wave 8, not really quite so much. You'll need more towers. Wave 5 is the easiest wave, of course, because there's not that many enemies. They're not really oh, that much aware, so to say. They just walk into the defenses and die. And it's just really easy to take care of. If, you're, if you could note earlier in the video, I put a harpoon turret by itself at one of the, at one of the chokes, because the harpoon turret is strong enough. You shouldn't really underestimate your defenses that much. Like I noted in one of my other videos, your defenses can be pretty powerful. I, I make this video, and I do the combat phase without actually using any DPS, because my towers are just that good. I mean, it's they have 200 plus power, and you would think, oh, well, you still need your DPS, but actually you don't. If you set it up correctly, then your towers are perfectly fine to survive on their own. Those are my squire stats, by the way. If you want to pause, you could just see them. So yeah, I have the harpoon and the slice and dice set up at every choke. I put one harpoon at every crystal choke. Every at every wyvern choke. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. And now I'm gonna get my monk out. If you want to edit this build and add in some an ensnare aura at this choke the one that I'm at right now, for the wyverns, then you can do that. I do add an ensnare and an electric. Not not one of each of those aura towers at each other wyvern choke, but I add an ensnare at one of the wyvern chokes and an electric at the other wyvern choke. Part Partially because of the way that the wyverns maneuver around the crystals. As you can see, I'm putting ensnare, electric, and strength drain. Very typical defense setup. You see this in a lot of builds. In advanced builds, you need those three because they just work perfectly together and they harmonize with the 
um, the squire towers, and especially the traps, like inferno and gas traps, and the proximity mine as a last resort. And then with the ethereal spike trap with a second last resort, it just all works out. That That's if you get, start getting into some serious advanced maps like Morago and Zane Plus. So yeah, these ore stacks are really, really useful. Consider using them if, if you're not already. And strength drains, I may place them a little back because the only the only big part the only big damage comes from ogres when they're close up to the crit when they're close up to the defenses. And then also there might be some um, ninjas, that's what everybody calls them. But some dark elf warriors that may jump up behind and start attacking your harpoon turrets, so strength drain rise. And then placing another aura stack. And then uh, around here, I'm gonna place the two Wyvern defenses. An ogre just spawns, so we're gonna watch the ogre die easily. You could just see how everything works, you don't have to do anything. Even if the defenses are weaker, it'll take a little more time to kill, but you should be good enough. Especially since you're probably gonna use DPS on this. I'm not using DPS, which is just showing the power of the defenses. But if you do use DPS, you're definitely gonna pass. See, there's that weird awkward tower thing, that's why I want the electric aura there. And the heart printer can't exactly hit behind there, so an ensnare aura wouldn't really help that much. In my opinion. Okay, yeah, so those are all the auras. And then, this map is really good for looting chests, so if you need some good level 70 armor, that's a, this is a good place to get it. So yeah, I'm now switching to my trap hunters, and I'm going to place several traps. I was mentioning the inferno traps earlier with, with how they work well, with the strength drain aura, and like that, that huge aura stack in general. I'm going to place one over here. And this makes it a lot easier for for you and your defenses, because you don't have to move as much. You could stay at the center and at the bottom area without having to go up to the top oh, so often. The ethereal spike trap. Um, the, the ninjas, the only ninjas that make it through are those that are poison resistant, and they will run past and try and kill everything. So if they're, they're not going to be like electric resistance, because then they'll travel slowly and they'll get shot and stuff. So, the ethereal spike trap, it just deals with any ninjas because they're going to be poison resistant, most likely. The proxies that you see are to deal with any trespassers that go, that ends up going in an unwanted direction. It should be good enough considering there's only like one mob throughout the whole map that might do that. Which is like a cobalt or something. Those are my stats. I have an, another inferno trap at the main choke just that you don't suffocate and see at the combat phase. 